Okay, I stole the shit. Bicorn horn, whatever the fuck. Hey Snape, I stole shit from under your greasy nose. You don't even care. In the dungeons again. I wouldn't be surprised if you became hopelessly lost. Yeah, well, fuck this guy. I'm in the potions classroom. Better keep an eye out for Snape. I can't even... What the fuck, Harry? What goes through your head? Hi, Harry. Hi. I found some bicorn horn to add to the potion. Yes, Hi. found. I'm trying to find the location of the next ingredient. But I should have it tracked down soon. In the meantime, I'll go add this to the potion. They're starting a dueling club and the first meeting is today. That could be interesting. Come to the Great Hall if you want to learn how to duel. You mean it's optional? No, of course not. The game will make me do it even if it's optional for the other nameless students. If only I knew Spongify. What a lovely day to be taking a stroll through the dimly lit underground dungeons. Oh, it's just right across on the other side of the entrance hall, is it? Watch where you're going! Don't walk slower oh, than me, you me. green kidney stone. I wish the real heir of Slytherin would make herself known. It could be a girl, you know? Is that something you would be oh, proud of? You. Knowing it was a woman behind oh, this terrorist attack? Oh, okay. Well, th 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 what the fuck heir. are you doing? I don't see you complaining about that guy running into you. Can everyone see me? Can you all hear me? Excellent. I started Dueling Club to train you to defend yourselves. Dueling Club meets every day in the antechamber just outside the Great Hall. In Wizard Dueling, the object of the exercise is to incapacitate your opponent. There are three spells you may use in Dueling. Brick to Sempra, which knocks your opponent back and reduces stamina. Mimble Wimble, which prevents your opponent from accurately casting their next spell. Expelliarmus, which reflects spells back onto your opponent. I thought Expelliarmus literally spell. disarmed the opponent, the not reflected their spell the back right at them. Mouse button. To cast a selected spell on your opponent, press the left mouse button. You may build up the strength of Richter Semper and Mimble Wimble by holding the Hermione constantly looks sad in this game, which is weird right now since she's presumably more than happy to listen to any teacher explain something, especially if it's Lockhart. Every flavored beans is required to duel. The victor wins the opponent's beans. To challenge a student to a duel, simply walk up to them. If you have enough beans, you will be invited to duel. My assistant, Professor Snape. Fuck that guy. I am your colleague, not your assistant. Has informed me that he knows a tiny bit about dueling and has graciously agreed to monitor the duels. And now for a brief demonstration, Mr. Potter, if you'd like to partner up with Mr. Weasley. I don't think so. Time to split up the dream team, I think. Mr. Malfoy, come over here. Let's see what you can make of the famous Potter. Thrashing, you will be a treat, Potter. You're still a fuckboy, though. Very well, then. One's at the ready. When I count to three. Scared, Potter. You wish. One, two, three. Today, Potter. I just started. The pleasure of dueling the great Slytherin house. Richard Emperor. I'm already bored with this. Why can't I just jump across the divide and punch him in the face? That would be much easier, wouldn't it? Okay, everything's either missing him or he's deflecting it. Speaking of Rick DeSempra, Lockhart said that in addition to knocking your opponent back, it reduces their stamina too? Does that mean you could theoretically kill someone by doing it enough times? I mean, presumably they would faint first and the duel would then be over, but 
if you kept casting Rick Sempra on an unconscious person, would they eventually just have all the energy needed to sustain life functions knocked out of them? Nice aiming my shit. I got optically fucked in the retina. Oh, I guess I finally got a hit on him. Too bad it wasn't the spell that moves me any closer to defeating him. Actually, you know what? This would have been cool as a split-screen multiplayer mode, and you could select any character you wanted to play as. Why didn't we have that? That would have been fantastic, in my opinion. Looks like I'm finally starting to get some hits in, although he's still deflecting most of them. Slytherin takes an undeserved hit. You're commentating now? First of all, that's my job. Secondly, what do you mean undeserved? It's not like I cheated or anything. Fuckboy over there just doesn't know how to move side by side and know how to properly move his legs in a sideways walking motion at the same time. Snuck that one in, didn't you, Potter? You say that like it's a bad thing. Fuck off. Well, it's taking a while, but it seems like the strategy is this. Don't build up your spells to try and deliver a more powerful hit, that gives the opponent time to deflect it as they can clearly see what I'm about to do a couple of seconds beforehand. I think it's best to just try and rapid fire Rictusempra as quickly as you can. While Draco is certainly repelling some of them, I'm also hitting him maybe half of the time as well, slowly whittling his stamina down with each relatively weaker casting of the spell. At the same time, I'm also not attempting the switch to Expelliarmus in an attempt to repel Draco's spells. So I've got to make sure I can properly dodge his attacks using my own two feet. Strike him back. Snuck that one in, didn't you, Potter? God, this is taking forever, though. Any second now, and I'll be done with this shithead. He's desperately hanging on. In fact, I think he's deflected more of my own spells back at me with his defensive stance than shot his own spells at me. It'd be cool if I could finish him off with a more powerful burst of energy. Yeah, I don't know what I expected. Back to the other method. And it worked! Disappointing my ass. Be an impartial commentator for once. Got something to say to my face? Oh shit! It's the green light all over again? Uh, never mind. Just a big ass snake. Leave me alone! What was that? Did Harry just his? Big deal. I can do that. Granted, it won't control any snake or anything. Not him. The fucking thing looks like a stretched out alligator with no legs. You're a parcel mouth, Harry. You can talk to Snake. Why does it matter? It matters. Oh my god, look at the lighting across her face. Salazar Slytherin was famous for. Oh no. Exactly. Ron's whole face is in shadow too, like if a Catholic priest missed the forehead and smudged his entire face with a thin layer of ash. I think the last thing Harry needs right now is for two of his closest friends to not want to be near him. Harry lay awake for hours that night, wondering, could he be a descendant of Salazar Slytherin? I won't be seeing you in Herbology class. I'll be in Moaning Mercer's bathroom working on the Polyjuice Potion. I can't believe Hermione is skipping class. Well, You're talking to someone who just found out he can talk to snakes. You think Harry's surprised by much at the moment? I beg your pardon. Your begging has been denied. Watch where you're going. <laughs> I don't know. It's little details amuse me. I guess running past the grass with the increased bitrate looks better now. Granted, this is me looking at my raw recording before YouTube processes it, though. 
Oh, Ron, I'm glad you're not outrunning me as much as you used to, but you don't need to stop and flag me down when you're only ten feet ahead of me. Don't give me that look. Let's see. Well, I'll grab these. Oh, what the fuck? Welcome to Second Year Herbology, everyone. And for those of you who have forgotten, I am Professor Sprout. People forget the names of their teachers over one summer? Today, I'll teach you Defindo, the Severing Charm. Harry Potter, would you like to plant your feet in front of class? <laughs> that was so funny, plant my feet. I'd be glad to, Professor Sprout. Taking a leaf from Hermione's book, aren't you? Really? A leaf? We need more bad jokes. And it's not like I volunteered. She asked me to come up and I said yes. No big deal. Now, Mr. Potter, please fix your I think I'll skip over this as well. Well done. You've completed all of the exercises in top form. Fifteen points to Gryffindor. You have learnt Defindo, Harry. We've planted a seed of greatness here today. Why is now this class full of so many puns? Challenge. Welcome, Harry Potter, to my Defindo challenge. To complete the challenge, you must find the completion star, which can be found in a hallway just above you. Try to get to it as quickly as you can. If the challenge timer reaches zero before you have the completion star, you lose the challenge. Along the way, you will find challenge stars. Collecting challenge stars will boost your timer and score. I highly recommend you try to find all of them. Try to get the completion star with as many seconds remaining as possible. The higher your score is when you complete the challenge, the more house points I will award you. Some vines and plant growth can cover doorways and openings. You can use Defindo to cut through them and clear your paths. Okay, well thanks for all that information. That gave me an excuse to not feel the need to think of any more dialogue for a full minute of the video. Running past these stone walls with this background music playing makes the game feel much more similar to the atmosphere of the third Harry Potter game when you're just running around freely and exploring the grounds and castle. It's a nice feeling, I like it. Why do you have these things in here anyways? They're not even plants. Keep them in a cage or something. Surely, even if you can handle these creatures effortlessly, Professor Sprout wouldn't want to go to the trouble of dealing with potentially several of them anytime she walks from one end of the grounds to the other. Hey, how did that get out? I thought that was trapped in a hole. And it looks like the floor tile raised up to free it. Actually, where are we anyways? This isn't a greenhouse, and it's not exactly a garden either. This just looks like a relatively generic part of the castle. A courtyard area, perhaps. Why is my herbology lesson out here? Just because some overgrown vines are in this location? See, it just comes right back up, and it was a switch to raise a gate to reveal the challenge star. Does that mean the gate goes back down? Well, obviously not, but uh, for fuck's sake, I should have been able to guess that could happen with my back turned. What is this? Well, I should be safe up here. If there was anything left for me to do here. Defindo can also cut ropes that will release objects.
I guess those snails are too dumb to chase me through a doorway. Hmm, okay. Hook lump mushrooms can give off a cloud of poisonous gas, Harry. Avoid them, or use Defindo to cut their stems. Defindo! 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 Well, this is potentially very time-consuming if I have a large enough group of these things that I have to deal with. Oh, there's beans down there. Of course I'm going to take a full minute from my life to collect about half a dozen of them. <laughs> of course, I'm rewarded by the most valuable of all possible chest items. Did I even hit him? I think he just went below the ground and fucked off for once. Once you've separated a hawk lump from its skin, you can pick it up and throw it. <laughs> I'm supposed to use it to fuck up gnomes, then? What's the point when I can just use Flipendo? Am I going to be in a situation without my wand later in the game? Let's try again. Fuck! I guess I'll just have to wait for it to be out of in the open again. Hmm. Well, that was pointless. Oh, of course. Well, maybe it's the case that throwing a poisonous mushroom gas bomb at a gnome makes it shut up for a while. Eh, yeah, probably not. I'll test it out later to see what happens, though. At least now I know where those pixie noises were coming from. Fuck you. Fuck you. What's in here? Good, another card. Fuck that thing in particular. Here we go. Okay, grab it. Oh, good fucking job, Harry. You really just let that thing bounce and fall off the side of the railing, too? How do you miss things like this? You already missed one earlier. An episode or two ago. How did that land on the inside of an open chest lid? And did that thing really just try to charge at me through the stair railing? What in the ever-living shit, honestly? Good, I found another star only a minute after the last one. But all this work so far, and I've only collected 3 out of 14 stars. I realized I had to do the dueling club first, but we're nearly 20 minutes into this episode, and I'm not even close to being halfway done with the lesson. Spiky, prickly pants. Shoot their spikes when you get too close. Avoid them. Use Defindo to cut their stairs. Yeah, I remember these organic shrapnel bombs from the last game. One of them practically neutered Harry in the fourth episode of the Sorcerer's Stone series of videos that I did earlier. to say about this game, or even this particular level at the moment. I think I've said it before in the previous Sorcerer's Stone series, but I find it much easier to comment on parts of the game that aren't the lessons. So things such as watching the story progress through character interactions, wandering around the castle, or doing pretty much fucking anything that isn't repetitive such as shooting spells at doors and monsters are things that I generally find more interesting to talk about. I've also been thinking about doing a video series for Need the Speed the Run, and I've jotted down a few ideas from the last time I've played it. But driving a car down a road when you're not doing some of the story-driven action sequences may be difficult to comment on, but we'll see. 
So yeah, now I can also shoot Defendo at spider webs now, so that's cool. Maybe it's the puzzle solving aspect that's difficult for me to commentate on. That doesn't mean the game is necessarily bad, it just means that a gameplay experience may not equate to an equally enjoyable third person viewing experience. In fact, that's probably often the case. You'd rather play a game than watch someone else play it. Like, I really enjoyed playing Portal 1 and 2, but I'm not sure how much I could say about those games without just describing what's literally going on in front of me all the time. And if I did that to a limited extent, that would be okay, particularly if I expanded upon what's visually present on the screen and going further by doing some sort of deeper analysis of what the game is presenting. But if the only thing I can think of to say is just mindlessly describe what's in front of me, then what's the point? Might as well just not bother with doing commentary in the first place. So, yeah, I'm just rambling at this point. And what did knocking that block out of place even accomplish? Eh, on second thought, I'll look at that later. Sometimes I just can't decide where I want to go next. Good to know that Harry can cast a spell properly without completing the incantation. He practically didn't even utter the word Scourge in the first place that time. I guess that block has to fall through and break the floor. Ah, that practically just banged my wand on its head and it knocked the fucking thing out of the air like a mosquito. Yep, that was right. Now, um... Yeah, screw it, I'll just jump down. It's not that big of a deal if I take some fall damage. I seem to encounter frogs often enough anyways. Were those platforms supposed to move underneath me while I was jumping across them? Because that would make more sense in terms of challenging the player a bit while shooting at a couple of pixies. I think they messed something up there. like I knocked the gnome down with the mushroom even though I hadn't cut the vines out of the way yet. That must be some powerful gas. See, I told you I would find another chocolate frog to replace some health soon. What is that gnome even doing? Looks like it's running into a wall in the back of the hole, like it can't figure out which way the exit is and chase after me. realize that these grunting noises that the gnomes make aren't too different from the grunting noises the caretaker Mr. Filch makes sometimes. I still sort of laugh at the noises he made when he was chasing Harry through the library at night in the last game. What the fuck is this thing? Whatever it is, it's not dying. Okay, so aim for the... arms? I mean, they kind of remind me of Venus flytraps, where the bit that clamps down is sort of like a mouth, so I would have thought that the vines were more analogous to necks. I guess I'll find out. Yeah, being able to sever them like that is pretty useful. It practically reduces them to non-threats. Another star, very good. Okay, that'll get me there. Now what? Wind are tree spirits that guard trees. 
cast Dukundo on them to make them disappear. What's with all these creatures and Mr. Filch making these weird noises? Well, seems easy enough to deal with these as well. So no big deal. Okay, two beans. Three. That's weird, you can fit three in the watering can and only two in the pot. I just realized I could have broken the second rope holding up the other end of the board to make crossing it slightly easier. Okay, clearly that's not working. I'll have to climb up there and deal with these purebred Pinocchios myself. Why do I feel like the name Pinocchio sounds like it could also belong to a Pokemon? Just a sudden random thought I had. Whoa, hold on there, Speedy. There you go. That's where you belong. these things keep climbing out of their holes. God damn, I've never seen one climb a wall vertically before. Or it's the platforms, rather. Fucking got hit in the balls again. Uh, I don't know why I would want to go that way. Alright, come at me. There we go. In you go. Alright, very good. Fuck you in particular. Fuck this as well. And let's see now. I can't grab onto that? Alright then. These things can even live underground when there's no sunlight. I just now realized that those tree monsters drop Wigan tree bark. How could I have been so stupid and not figured that out earlier? Once again, I can't figure out what the gargoyle lantern thing even activated. You know what? It would be cool if the birdie bots every flavor beans auto-sorted themselves into flavors in your inventory, and you could use the nasty ones, such as vomit flavored, as a weapon against enemies if you throw it into their mouths. Maybe you could also use nicer flavors to give you temporary abilities or a bit of health, but only if you had, say, ten of one kind of flavor as opposed to being able to enhance yourself with only one bean. If you could restore a bit of health with ten or fifteen of the same flavored beans, that would be a bit more challenging than using just one, and would also let you weigh whether or not you want to sacrifice some beans for a short-term gain instead of saving them up for any sort of long-term rewards or house points. But overall, it would be pretty unnecessary since these Harry Potter games are easy to beat and were probably designed with casual players in mind. I don't know, I'm just thinking off the top of my head here. I'd love to throw a shit-flavored bean into one of those Venus flytrap mouths. I bet Birdie Bot did actually produce a few shit-flavored beans on occasion, but J.K. Rowling would never list that in any of her books, I'm sure. Oh well, casting a magical spell at them is just as fun, I suppose. Why do these little spiders even try to fight me? What do they think they're going to do? Even when I stand still, they don't seem to crawl up my legs and hurt me.
Okay, so only larger pots seem to have beans and or can be knocked over by a flippendo spell. You'd think smaller objects in general would be easier to tip onto their side, but what do I know? Let's see, well... I guess with a larger pot you could stuff more beans into it, so... Yeah. Whoa. For a second there, I thought it lit up the direction I already came from. Not sure I've seen Lumos platforms with their own texture, such as a brick or tile floor. That's different. Uh, oh. Okay, that's easy enough. What are you turning around for, fucking asshole? Am I hearing the last snail I just imprisoned through these thick stone walls? All it is is a slimy, sticky noise or something. It shouldn't be that loud. Rick Fuck you! Oh, shit. Oh, a second one? Fuck. Okay. Well, I can handle these, as long as they don't poof into existence on the very spot that I'm currently standing. That third one has its own hole to go sit in. Back you go. I guess there's another card or something when I put it in. But there better be anyways. Otherwise, what's the point? Beans? I can pick those up anywhere. That didn't fucking count? It was practically over the edge already. <sighs> this is the longest episode I've ever done. I think it may even be the only one so far to exceed a half hour in length as too. Oh, fucking finally. Well done, Mr. Potter. You have completed my Defindo challenge. The remaining time now becomes your personal high score. Oh, who knows what was in that chest there. But I don't care. I'm tired and just want to go do something else right now. <laughs>